the lived identity claims of, of real folk. I don't want to do that. I want, I want to push at it, and, I, wa and I, want, I, I want to push at it in the way that queer theory pushes at it and says, what work is your stable identity doing? What normalcy is your stable identity constructing? And therefore, let's play it backwards and see what lines of power are functioning in the assertion of that stable identity. That's what I want. I want to find a theory, a theoretical way of thinking that, and I want to find a theological way of thinking that. Talk about the notion of God as a stable identifier, right? The, the, the inheritance in Christian theology of Greek notions of stability in the divine is uh, precisely what I'm working against. And that makes me very unbardian. It makes me very unbardian um, that that you know God, the one stable signifier, never changing. Uh uh, that's not queer God. You know so. But I want to keep I want to keep thinking about this challenge that that you've raised. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shauna. Um, my question is about knowing God, it's because it seems like one of the, the longings that we have in religious community is to know God and to become close to God. And so how we've done that is by naming God. And even in communities where we want to sort of explode the, that identity, we just seem to pile on more names for God, right? So I'm just wondering how, if, if a queer God is an undefinable, sort of uncontainable God, which, I'm, which I love, how do we know that God? I love that. I love that. Yeah, like, so I could name you 30 names and would I know you? Right, right. Um, so on the one hand, on the, I feel like I'm always in this sort of, you know, the tension. On the one hand, that's what we do, right? That's, we give God identity just as we, we need identity ourselves. And then it's like, I know God because I know God's identity. Um, and on the other hand, and I do the same to you. I do the same to you. I think I know you. Well, I don't really know you, Shauna, but you know, I will, right? But I think I know you. And, and so you are, you, know, you are no longer a mystery to me because I know you. And then when you disrupt what I know about you, I get really pissed off, right? Because you are no longer being, mm. so, so in part, I think it, you know, what we can say in a generous way toward ourselves is that's what we do. That's not bad. It's just not complete, right? It's, so, so how, how do we be generous to the incompleteness of our identities? How do, we, how do we allow God to fail at God's identity? The identity we've given to God. How do I allow you to fail at your identity? How do I allow, so there's a certain generosity to the failure to live up to what is, what, what's a social convention to begin with? Without saying, let's do away with the social convention of naming and of identities, because we need them. I don't want to be without my family. Mm. You know, I don't want to be without my lesbian sisters. I don't want to be with you know, I don't want to be without CTS, right? And who we are. So that I'm not arguing against all of that. And those names somehow help me feel like I know you. But I also depend on you to disrupt my knowing by being present. You know, now I'm, now I'm being very Bonhoeffian at the moment, right? Yeah. So this is Christ the center. This is the, uh, you know, the disruption that actual presence cr creates. If you are really present, then, I, then, then I, 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 there is a mystery to you that, that can never be known, and he calls that Christ, right? So that, that, that's what we're after. So I'm not, I'm, I'm quite orthodox, as a matter of fact, yeah. In that sense, I'm quite orthodox. I, I, am, I am trying to suggest that, that what queer theory does and what that kind of theology does can be brought together, and then we might be able to talk about queer theology. That's what I'm suggesting. But not queer theology that just relies on identity characteristics. I know there are many more questions, and I hope we continue the conversation in other ways, but I think we need to draw this to a close. Uh, we want to thank Professor Schneider again. You're welcome. You're welcome. She's, she's orthodox. That I didn't expect to hear today.
In the spirit of Gilberto Castañeda, let us pray. Oh divinidad de muchos rostros, de muchas voces y de incontables colores, oh santo espíritu que nos penetras hasta lo más profundo de nuestras dudas y temores, nos revelas lo escondido y nos sumerges en tu luz de verdad y justicia. Que tu amor por el mundo nos siga inspirando y moviendo hacia una comunidad solidaria y justa para todas y todos. Oh divine one of many faces, of many voices, and uncountable colors. Oh great spirit, who pierces us to the deepest reaches to our doubts and fears, who reveals to us that which is hidden, and submerges us in your light of truth and justice. May your love for the world continue to inspire us and move us towards a community of justice and solidarity for all. In your many names, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Go in peace.